The Wednesday Week is sponsored by the Riverside Cafe, new outside bar, now open on match days. Ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to the Wednesday Week, the Sheffield Wednesday podcast. I'm Lord Hillsborough, and with me on the line, we've got a full house, ladies and gents. Uh, uh, Fudgy, how the devil are you? I'm all right. How's it going? Is everybody well? <laughs> Do I, I'm, I'm not even at work. Can you hear pots and pans clattering in the background? Can you hear an air conditioning unit? No, you can't. I've got a bottle of quill mess, and I'll be sat watching the Chelsea Leicester game. Oh, it's a corker. <laughs> Victoria, <laughs> my love, you're back. People have missed you. Where you been? Um, following the events of the last couple of weeks, I would now like to make my position 100% clear to those around me and hopefully allow a line to be drawn to the situation. <laughs> I understand that my actions were unacceptable and to that end, I apologise sincerely to my podcast mates, the head coach and all of the coaching staff first thing on Monday morning. <laughs> I also apologise to our fantastic supporters who have been so kind to me during my time at the Wednesday week. I would also like to now apologise to Lord Hillsborough. I was wrong and did not show him the respect that he deserves. <laughs> he has shown full support for the last few weeks, for which I offer my genuine gratitude. My heart is with the Wednesday week, and I now wish to put these events behind me, concentrate completely on my podcasting, and help this wonderful club move towards a success that we all desire. Good evening! <laughs> Hiya! <laughs> that sounds very familiar. <laughs> If anybody would like to see what those um, uh, actions were, there is a video online of Victoria <laughs> strutting into my office, covered in grease and just with a, a, <laughs> a feather bore on. Which, uh, yeah. oh, Victoria, it's lovely to have you back, my We've been worried about you, sweetie pie. We've been terribly. I, I did get a few questions in the Riverside Cafe. I was like, I'm really sorry, I've just been out with my mum. God, <laughs> two weeks in a row, I've taken Barbara out like sauce. <laughs> Um, Rich Davis here, Dickie Owl, how the devil are you all been? I'm absolutely marvellous, thank you, my lord. I, I, that's as scripted as this show's ever got, isn't it, really? <laughs> it really is. Actual preparation. Um, Eddie, Eddie's is as well. Eddie, how are you? Oh, boy. I'm, I'm all right, thank you, uh, your lordship. I have been spending the last uh, 48 hours hunting down Ramon because <laughs> clearly <laughs> Liam is... <laughs> Liam has not been himself, <laughs> and I worry about him. So the hunt is on Ramon. I don't know where you are, but I'm going to find you, and I'm going to kill you. Eddie, I'm very annoyed that you've not opened the show with a, um, a 90s reggae track there. Uh, kind of a bit pissed off about it. Uh, <laughs> what, what's it? Start of a new leaf? Time, times have moved on. It's not last season anymore. That is so 2015-16. God fudge. Aw. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, we've got Mr. Mario Jamesy. Oh boy, how the devil are you? Well, I don't have a script and I don't know the whereabouts of Liam Palmer or Ramon, but I, I do have a story to tell, which sounds a little bit like an ABBA song because I had a dream <laughs> last night that we were... <laughs> That we were, this is true, that we were at home to Norwich and they scored in the first minute and then we equalised in the second half. And um, I, was, I was watching it in the press box with Dom Housen. This is a true story. That's what, was that's, it that's, it in the that's what happened in my dream. We just literally sat there with a the compact mirror. Is that what it was? <laughs> Dom, what do you think to this game? I think it's great, James. What do you think to this game? I like your face. I like your face. Yeah. I'll never raise a compact mirror. <laughs> Anyway, how is everyone? Well, I say everyone, I'm only addressing my fellow iPhone 7 buddies, Rich and Fudge, because the rest of you, dead to me, not interested. <laughs> you wouldn't even play words with friends. I downloaded the new I thing so I could play words with friends. Me and Eddie have got a game going. Yeah, you wouldn't play. Bear in mind that 10 minutes before that, Vic, you text me saying, we are not friends. Because you cheated on me in a dream. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, nobody's played words with friends since 2011. Why? Uh, me why? and Eddie do, and I'm beating him 69 to 5 at the moment. Oh, well, well all right. You can talk about it via MSN Messenger then. As well. <laughs> 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 oh, look at Fudge being funny. Right. 
That is it. Fudge, you're out of my top eight for another <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, right then, ladies and gents, let's crack on with some football chat, shall we? Um, first things first, the Birmingham game. Oh, crikey, this was a bit of a naughty chuffer, wasn't it, boys and girls? Do we, have we got to talk about football? Can we just carry on being silly for an hour? Because that's much that's <laughs> I think much people pay to listen to that. Oh, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, the uh, the Birmingham game, ladies and gents. So let's uh, talk about some football. It's going to be hard work tonight. I can smell it already. Um, it, it, it was a bit weird, weren't it? I didn't really thoroughly enjoy this one. Look, it was, um, it was kind of same old story, really, in so much that we we created plenty of chances, but we didn't take them, particularly in the first half. Um, and we got struck with the um, the old proverbial sucker punch at the end. Um, I, I thought that we did, did enough to win the game. I thought that we should have won the game. I think we deserved to win the game. Um, and we were the better team. We had the better chances. Uh, I thought we, we, we scored a really smart goal. And credit to uh, Fletcher for what is going to be the assist of the season. Uh, and that really should have put us in, in control. And, and then the game turned on a bit of a rush of blood to uh, Kieran Westwood's head. Um, he didn't need to make that challenge and um, the game changed there and then. And, and it was weird because, you know, the, the same thing happened against Bristol City. They had a penalty that, that you know, would have would have put the game to bed uh, and the game changed on them missing that penalty. And similarly on, on Saturday, the game changed on them scoring the penalty because obviously we went on and, and we lost, um, we lost the, the game. Um, and it was kind of proof, really, about what the championship is like because it's such fine margins, isn't it? Dave had that header in injury time that if that goes in, we win the game and it hits the crossbar and a minute later they score and we've we've lost it. And that's, you know, the championship is so harsh in, in, in that respect. Do we feel like we got mugged? Just quick show of hands. Well, you well, know, show of voices. Do we feel like hello. we got mugged? Yes or no? No. A little bit. No, no, we didn't take his chances, and if you don't take chances, yeah. you don't deserve to win the game. Um, exactly. You know that's that's the the only stat ultimately that that matters is the fact that Birmingham scored twice and we scored once. Um, so it's our own fault for not taking those chances. There's probably a bit of luck involved in that as well, but you know ultimately we did enough to, to win that game and we should have won that game. So I I I think that we should be pointing the finger of blame firmly at ourselves rather than feeling a bit sorry for ourselves. Yeah, football is 50% luck in any case. Even even the greatest teams rely an awful lot on luck, more than perhaps any other sport. Uh, listen, one of the statistics that um, I think Sky were, were big on, or maybe it was on Twitter or whatever, something was that, before, uh, in the early part of the game, someone put a stat up and it said um, that Sheffield Wednesday were third in the league and fourth in the league um, in uh, percentage of possession and number of passes and Birmingham were absolutely rock bottom of the championship for both yeah 24th for both uh, uh, percentage of possession and also passes made right so we knew what to expect Carlos and the team it, it were prepared for uh, Birmingham letting us have the ball and letting us do what we want with and Sky made a very good point early on saying actually Birmingham they they welcome a Sheffield Wednesday coming and passing around a lot in front of them because what they will do is uh, is soak up pressure. They will look to hit on the break. They will look to stretch us, and and we are a bloody sacrificial lamb for that kind of play, aren't we? The number of times that a bit of pace gets behind us or we're not quite organised at the back, and we end up with you know with three guys at the back four back and the other one still floating off down the field, or we end up with one guy playing somebody on side. We're not the most rigid team because we press so high up the pitch. Um, and they made us pay for it. I have no... I don't think I've got any complaints with the result. I'm a little bit upset by almost a naivety that we could um, we could finish them off, uh, you know, or restrict them to fewer goal-scoring chances than, than we got and expect that we were going to win the game. Um, we're still... We're still a way off being able to 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 do the old Aussie ideas and beat teams five four. You know we can we can only guarantee to score maybe one goal a game, um, and we leave ourselves open to to get hit on the break. So it, for me, it was disappointing the way that we were set up a little bit. Um, I think we executed all right, but I think it was disappointing the way we were set up. 
Uh, but I can't argue with the result. And if I'm honest, if you look at those two games that we've had with two late injury time winners, if neither of those go in, we've got two points. As it happens, we win one, we lose one, we've got three points. So realistically, no complaints. I think that's a, a, re- a really important point with regards to the defence because last season we we had a good defence, we had a tight defence, we didn't let in many goals. We had a couple of games where it did fall to bits and Bristol City springs to mind um, last, whenever that was, back at Easter last season. Um, but yeah, for, for whatever reason, we... We are creating more chances this season. We're we're creating the number of chances of a top two team, um, and I've got some stats that you'll find thoroughly boring later on uh, that will uh, that will prove that. Um, but it's the fact that the defence has become leaky that's the um, that's the real problem. And what what's worrying me quite a leaky. bit at the moment? Leaky, yeah. leak is a good word. Um, oh, I don't want to think about a leaky defence, but. Yeah, you know, we've, 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 we've sprung a, a leak. Yeah, it's it's become a little fluid as our, our defence. Um, oh. the, the thing that... <laughs> that wrong. I've just got images of Tom Lee's <laughs> running around with a nappy on. You know what I mean? He's <laughs> yeah. it just he's oozing have a bit. Found, at the have moment. you found That's those on problem. Google? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just yeah. I, I, I tapped in Tom Lee's piss party, and uh, yeah, they're, they're all there for the world to see. <laughs> Oh, 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 although it's, it's nice to widen my horizons on what I'm searching on the internet. To be fair. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know if you guys um, agree with this or not, but but the thing that that worries me the most is that defensive central midfield role, and we've we've talked about it a lot, haven't we, in the last few weeks, and talked about how important it is, whether we've got someone that can do it. I, I'm really starting to think now that we need Hutch back in that position because something's happened that has meant that we're shipping in goals. Westwood's had a couple of howlers, but that that doesn't equate to uh, how our defence is performing at the moment. And I, I really feel that it's um, it's that lack of defensive cover um, in midfield. And, and Hutch is by far and away the best footballer at this football club when it comes to that position. Um, and I think that we need him back there. And that just means as much as we want to play all these great attacking midfielders that we've got, we're just going to have to rotate them. We've just got no choice. Absolutely. I think it goes back to, to, to what I was saying last week when I said about what is the the, the midfield, what, what is the full players that, that need to play in there? And I'm still not sure who this should be. Should it be Dave Jones or David Jones or whatever he's, you know, what are we call him these days? Uh, should be a bit of defensive midfielder? Should it be Barry Bannon? Should it be Hutch? I, I still don't know and I still don't know I mean, is Matthias still to come back? You know, there's, there's still how we're going to fit all these people in, and and who are the the, the perfect four? I, I really, I'm 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 lost on that one at the minute. I think we've got to get that out of our head though, because I I don't think there is a way we can fit everyone in. What we've got to do is just decide who the right midfielders are for the game that we're playing. The right four. And the, yeah. the rest of them, you just have to say, "I'm sorry, you're on the bench." And one of them's got to be Hutch. He's he's got to play in in that um that deep line midfield role. Um, and and the rest, if they're not playing, tough luck because we're we're not going to win games if we're trying to do what we have been doing, which is sort of trying to accommodate everyone. Um, and it's the same old saying, is it? If you if you try and please everyone, you end up pleasing no one. It did lead to a moment of hilarity at work. I had my uh, I've got Sky Go on my blower now because I'm showbiz as, and um, <laughs> and I had it I had it on the front the front desk at work and I sat watching it, and. Um, and in the, in the corner of my, uh, 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 you know, just over there, I went, uh, I heard, excuse me. I'm going, fuck, fuck, they, they clean through. Uh, excuse me. Shit, they're running. Uh, excuse me. I've just gone, twat! Blow <laughs> 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 the fucking was, you know what I mean? I, 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 I just screamed twat at a man. Um, so, uh, if anybody does want to give me a job, I'm available for work. <laughs> Uh, I can see myself. I, I can see that one coming back on me uh, in a couple of days. But I um, don't. I don't think you were the only one to, to shout that particular word at somebody at that particular. Oh yeah, time. I, I think I, I think I shouted one of four expletives <laughs> that, uh, that probably got mentioned at that time. A lot of which were on uh, were on uh, were on Twitter there for all, for all to see. <laughs> now, of course, the fact of the matter remains: that after eight games last season, we had nine points. After eight games this season, we have eleven points. So we're actually in a better position. I know it doesn't. We're on our way. We're on our way. 
We've got two points. We don't you, care. You just sounded like a bunch of really drunk people. <laughs> <laughs> it was that, just that really was badly out of time. I just have to mention the fact that I was on the telly. Did you see me? You were. Absolutely. Yes. You were. You, were. Yes. you were. I was yes. so happy. My long-suffering oh, missus, I think, took a photo. She did, yes, yep. and she um, she tweeted it um, to me, which was very uh, thoughtful of her. Um, <laughs> it was very it was very kind of Sky to get me at the exact moment I was pulling a very strange face at my friend uh, John. Not quite oh, sure what I was doing, bastard. but the the, <laughs> the sound effect that went with the face was a bit of a. Huh? Um, so. Um, <laughs> It was a special. It was a special moment. And, uh, and I have that picture laminated on my bedroom wall. And Brilliant. now you can think of Brilliant. the noise as you're using that picture. Huh? Oh, he sounds. <laughs> he sounds like. Um, he sounds like you know if Carry On movies were a bit more explicit, that would be the sound effect for an erection. You know what I mean? What? <laughs> <laughs> Just to give a little bit of a shout out as well to uh, a chap on Twitter uh, at row underscore tweet, uh, Andy, uh, as most people probably call him. Uh, it did um, Photoshop your beautiful sky picture into a, a lovely gnome picture as well, there, James, which is wonderful. <laughs> if you would like to see that, uh, get... <laughs> yeah. I, I believe they're getting them in store at the Owls Mega Store next week. It's got a special function where if you press the left foot, it goes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> If you press the other one, it says, can we talk about Wolves Away? Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> you press the other one and it actually I mean, gets one... up and it, and it walks to Wolves. So that's what it does. I've, I've got like 20 on order. <laughs> and it, it wouldn't even be out of place with the rest of the tat in the shot, would it? <laughs> um, now, as Fudge alluded to earlier, there was some rather disturbing scenes, I'm going to say, from half time. Now, everybody knows my sort of views on... on I'm trying to not to swear here, ladies and gents, but uh, people that go to football... Absolute knobheads. Thank you. Is the thing Sorry. that you're looking for, my lord. Absolutely, certainly. Um, I, I'm not a fan of, of, of uh, any type of violence or hooliganism or anything at all in football. And the videos that came out from halftime at Birmingham, I'm not ashamed to say that I was ashamed to be a Wednesday fan at that point. That, to me... I think... I think hooliganism not... is giving them a bit too much credit there, my lord. That, like, don't get me wrong, I don't agree with any of it, but that's not hooliganism. That's pathetic blokes ripping down a side. You all look stupid. You know, we're talking, we're talking uh, middle-aged women, and and you know, people just looking to earn some spending money and stuff like that. And I can imagine that these guys were genuinely quite frightened. I mean, I, I know, you know, a, a lot of people on Twitter have been saying it's just a sign. Get over yourself. You know what I mean? But. In, it, it, it's more than that, and the the question for me that as soon as I saw that is, there are going to be people from Sheffield, people of our own, family members, cousins, friends that that work in the West End. What do you think the Birmingham fans are going to do when they come to Hillsborough? Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think they're just going to get on with it, lovely, and all have a nice time, or shake hands and go, "Well, that was a jolly good show." No, they're going to go, "No, no, let's fucking smash it up in it, mate," and that's what's going to happen. <laughs> But I think I think the main point to remember is that those guys were at work. They're doing the job, you know, and that if someone came in, well, obviously I work at a charity, James works at a radio station, Lord Hillsborough works in a mansion, Eddie works... I don't work. My well, Eddie, 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 Eddie sits in a hot tub and... I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't work. Fudge <laughs> pretends to, is. but records a podcast, Dickie Owl, <laughs> all sort of social media stuff. But, like, at the end of the day, if someone came into your work and just started <laughs> smashing the lot up, like, I hope I've not influenced any of this as well. Like, please don't this, smash lot up. This is up. your like, Victoria. This, this is your fault. This is, she's completely think, like, do they really think, honestly, and I'm speaking as a woman who would maybe look at a bloke and go, you're attractive, do they really think that's clever or big or impressive or whatever? I don't know. Is that meant to be a sign of being a man? Me and Vic had this conversation yesterday and uh, we, there's certain grounds I wouldn't take my kids to. Um, there's, there's three or four I can think of straight off the top. Um, but you never think that you're going to have to worry about it when you sat, you stood in the, the away and we're Wednesday fans, wherever it might be. Exactly. And that's a worry, that's a worrying bit. It's we were about... saying it about places like, oh, you wouldn't take them to Millwall, you wouldn't take them to Leeds, Birmingham, whatever else, because of trouble. Yeah. But not your yeah, own Birmingham fans. Was awesome. yeah. Not your own fans. It was yeah, our exactly. own fans that caused that problem. And every single one that can be recognised should be brought to 
Justice, Bam. if that's the right word. <laughs> Brought to justice. Get I in there. That's... I think that's just Victoria wanted to get her whip and her high heels on again. <laughs> Vic, Vic the bounty hunter. <laughs> I'd rather die than go near any of those blokes in that video. Can I, I, <laughs> I've, I've not said anything on this one um, yet, which is daft because, you know, I was there and I should be able to uh, shed some first-hand light on it. But I did miss the whole thing on the basis of the fact there were signs up before the game saying they weren't going to sell beer at half-time. So we kind of knew... Um, however, it was my turn to get half-time beers, so I did go down on 43 minutes. So we have a kind of a system. If, if we're losing, you can go down on 42. If you're drawing, it's 43. If you're winning, it's 44. But I went down and just said, are you selling beer? And they said no. So I went back up to catch the back end of the um, first half, catch injury time, and, um, and then just stayed up in the stand. So I missed the whole thing. But a couple of my mates had gone down to use the toilet and whatever and said, oh, it's it's... It's a bit, it's a bit tasty down there, um, and I didn't really fully appreciate what was, um, what was, what was going on until I saw the videos and um, and stuff like that. Afterwards. <laughs> all, all I'm going to say about it is that I think that the club statement about it today has been pretty much spot on. I think that they've given it a little bit of time, got their thoughts together. I think they've done the right thing by saying that they're working to try and identify the people in the video. They've not made any threats about, you know, bans for life or anything like that. Um, they've shown that they're taking it seriously. They, they want to speak to the people that are involved in that. I imagine if if they do find out who they are, and it, it can't be that difficult, that they'll give them a pretty stern talking to, and you know they might even get a ban for a couple of games or um, or something like that. Um, the thing is that you know I I, I obviously experience half time at pretty much every away game, and generally speaking, it, it does get like that. It does get really boisterous. You do get. Uh, th th there is a, a group of fans, particularly, that, that really are, 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 I'll use the word, enthusiastic. Um, and it does end up with beer being thrown all over the place and stuff like that. Um, the only thing I'd say in terms of people that, that take their kids and stuff like that, and yeah, you know, it is scary and intimidating, but it tends to be confined to kind of one area. And if you go and stand at either end of the concourse, then it's very different. And there's people stood around talking about the football and stuff like that. Um, I'm not in any way defending um, what what those guys did because it was absolutely stupid, and the uh, how those people working behind that bar must have felt is 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 atrocious and is really embarrassing for us as a, as a football club. Um, but I I just wouldn't want anyone thinking that every Sheffield Wednesday fan is irresponsible that goes to away games and that there's children who are you know left at at risk because there are very safe areas as, as well of the concourse at, at half time. I've just I've just realised something. It was James's fault why it happened. I've just realised he's gone down on 42 minutes and he's gone... Uh, sorry, 43 minutes. Yeah, I forgot 43. the system. 43. And he's gone. He's gone, gone down. There's no beer. He's walked back up and gone. And you know what Yorkshire folk are like? There's no beer. They're not serving beer. <laughs> what was that? They're not serving beer? There's no bloody beer! There's no beer! There's no beer! And all of a sudden it's spread across the away end. And, and, and all really people are walking down there. Yeah, that's it. They took two jabs! You know what I mean? It's... <laughs> It's all kicking off. They're already walking down for a Kit Kat with a pissed off look on the face. They are. <laughs> You're fault, James. You've done it. And the worst thing is, even I didn't get a beer. Rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> and you started it. Here's a question. Where would you find all of the following in one place? Chairs, tables, beer, Vic, James, more beer, Dick Yow, Eddie, more beer, and the rest of the Wednesday week gang. That's right, it's the Riverside Cafe's new outside bar. All of your favourite lagers, ciders, soft drinks and hand pump ales are now available outside. Come and see the gang and give it a try. The Riverside Cafe's new outside bar, now open on match days. Um, right, ladies and gents, let's crack on to some, some Sheffield Wednesday news, shall we? Um, first thing, amazing news. I, I can think no other way to put this, but uh, Mr. Jeremy LN has um, retired from football at the age of 24 to um, follow his religious calling. This is amazing, isn't it? You know, we, we talk sometimes about um, when we sign someone and say, oh, well, that came a bit out of the blue. We didn't really see that one coming. I mean, this is the ultimate curveball Sheffield Wednesday news story, probably of all time, isn't it? You know, if, if when, um, I think it was... Uh, friend of the podcast chris holt wasn't it that tweeted saying some news coming yeah. up from 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 dom in the next five minutes or mm. something if i could have done a list of what one thousand possible news <laughs> stories that it would have been <laughs> jeremy halan quitting football to concentrate on religion would would not have been one of them um 
And look, you know what? I mean, I've seen I've seen loads of tweets about it. Some have been funny. Some have not been funny at all. In fact, some I think fall into the same category of of, of how those fans behaved at halftime at Birmingham and people that should be really ashamed of themselves for some of the stuff they've said about it. Uh, one tweet that did make me chuckle is someone that tweeted something about how Jeremy Hallan actually retired at half time at Cambridge last month. <laughs> um which which did make me um chuckle. But joking aside from that, I seem to think if if on the on the podcast that we did after the Cambridge match, we mentioned quite a bit about how just completely disinterested he looked. And mm-hmm. I wonder if, if that kind of makes some sense now. I wonder if that was the game that kind of made his mind up that he'd just fallen out of love with football that religion is his is true calling. Um, and, you know, that was that. And, and fair play to him. You know, I, I can't say that I understand it, um, but, you know, I respect it. Um, he's played a hell of a lot of games for us. I didn't realise how many he's, he's played for us. He's had some good moments. I think of, of late, there have been few and far between. And, and I did probably expect him to be on his way in the not-too-distant future anyway. But, um, yeah, probably to Wolves rather than religion, to be honest. I think <laughs> any of us... If any of us as football fans say that we don't understand why he's done it, why he's given up football, then then maybe we're not really football fans because, uh, you know, there's a reason why the, the six of us get together on a Tuesday night when we could probably be doing something, uh, you know, less onerous. Um, and when we finish that, we'll record a podcast. And then we record a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> the re- the reason why we do stuff like this, as well as as well as go to Wolves away, sorry James, as way as well as go to Wolves away, is because we absolutely love this game, right? And I'm sure there are Wednesday fans out there. I'm sure there's Wednesday fans listening who uh, who are committed religiously in the same way that they're committed to football. I'm not one of those. Fans. Oh, yeah. It's it's easy to say that. To us, you know, football is a religion, but it's something that we give our heart to. It is our passion. It is it's something that fills our life. So, for us to say, or for any Wednesday fan to say, I don't understand how, Jer- how Jeremy. I almost said Jeremy Corbyn. Then I don't understand how Jeremy. Corbyn. <laughs> That's Let's fun for you, you. <laughs> Jeremy. Yeah, exactly. I don't understand how Jeremy Helan has left football behind for religion. Surely it's just two sides of the same coin. Doesn't it demand complete commitment? Doesn't it demand, you know, complete love? The number of times that we've all, we've made our little private deals, you know, at the times where Wednesday really need to go, and we've said, please, 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 if Wednesday score this, then, you know, I'll, I'll divorce my wife or um, I'll, you know, I'll never eat pizza again or, you know, or anything like that. I'll let you <laughs> come on the podcast. I let Victoria come on a podcast. That was the one that I did. And then, you know, look how that turned out. I think I speak as the only, I think, as the only religious podcaster. Do I? Yeah. Is that controversial? Um, I, I, I was confirmed as a uh, as a small boy. Uh, oh, yeah, God. They, well, they, they, yeah, that says it all. You're a small boy. Thanks very much. Do you know, do you know what? So, so was I. So was I. I blame it for so much in my lifestyle choices since. <laughs> seriousness like if i could uh, you know like i i believe and i go to church and i do whatever else and i know my bible back to front and i'm still friends with eddie and um, but i think that <laughs> if if i could give my time to something that i utterly utterly believed in be it sheffield wednesday be it charity be it whatever and just dedicate my whole life to that then i totally would and I'd, i think like um, James said earlier, there, there have been a lot of tweets that have come out about this that have showed up the disgraces that are around and that have made jokes and whatever else. Um, but I, I'd do it, I think, if I, if I could afford to. He's made a lot of money. He's 24. He can probably retire now. Like, he doesn't have to earn money anymore. He's going to go to Saudi. He's going to go to Mecca. He's going to live his dream. Football isn't for everyone. This is a job we've all dreamed of, and how dare you give it up to, you know, to uh, to go and, I don't, I don't want to poo-poo religion, but, you know, go go and, you know, chase a man, an imaginary man that lives in the sky. You know what I mean? But, but like, Good job you didn't want to poo-poo religion there. Thanks <laughs> <laughs> for being so diplomatic about my beliefs. <laughs> no, I, listen, with, with, with religion itself, I, I genuinely believe that it gives people uh, hope and it gives them an outlet and it gives them a, a way of leading their life. And for, for those that subscribe to it, 
fair fox to them. You know what I mean? You know, if, if that's if that's the choices you make, that's the choices you make. Um, right then, ladies and gents. So, um, cracking on, the next thing on the end uh, just says stat attack, James. Now, you did allude to the fact you've got some wonderful stats for us earlier, James. I have got some stats. I'll say at this point, all credit for these stats goes to uh, Peter in Denmark, uh, who on Twitter is P. Lohman, which is uh, P L O E H M A W N. All credit to him. Um, so, um, he's dug these stats out. Drop him a follow on, um, on, on Twitter. Um, if you recall earlier this week, one of the articles on the official Sheffield Wednesday website was Carlos calling for, uh, what did he say, that we need to be more efficient than we are as a, as a football team. Um, mm -hmm. Right, so these are some stats about our season, which prove actually that Carlos is absolutely correct on, on that. So we have had, so far this season, 63% more shots on target than in the first eight matches last season. So we've had the second highest number of shots on target in the championship. Yet, we've scored one goal less than we had at this point last season. We've created 50% more chances overall, which is the fourth most in the division. 50% uh, more chances overall than in the first eight games of last season. Um, we are only bettered by three clubs in the league in the creation of, and this is a strange phrase, and I can't explain it, but it's expected goals. So that mm. is the number of goals that you expected to score in a game, bearing in mind possession and chances you created and all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, th loads of these, I'm picking out the best ones here. We've scored 8% of our, our shots this season, and that is the 19th in the championship. So from being the second in the championship for, for what is it, shots on target, um, we, we've scored with 8% of shots. So that would put us pretty much almost relegation form in, in, in that respect. Um, now, last season we were we were loads more efficient. So at this stage, last season, if we if we'd only scored eight percent of our shots, we'd have scored uh, no. With last season's efficiency, we'd have scored twelve goals and not the nine goals that we've scored so far. Um, and basically, I'm not going to go through all these stats, but it basically proves that we are creating loads of chances. We're just not scoring them. That is the current problem. <laughs> we we need to be a hell of a lot more ruthless. And if we can do that, then we are without doubt in promotion form. Big up Peter Lohman, and big be a big up Peter Lohman mainly because uh, I've known him since the late nineties, representing owls at sheffield.ac.uk email, uh, even before forums email list. Uh, he, he used to, I think, I think he was about ten when he started dropping stat bombs like that on us. So well done, Peter. Um, that, that's there's some ludicrous stats. What does that mean? Th th basically, does that mean that we should pick Atty Nui Umar? Absolutely. <laughs> I noticed they <laughs> came out again. The uh, the new Hu boo Booers is that a thing? The the, the new Hu Booers. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. <laughs> they, they they came out in force again after Birmingham, didn't they? Did you did you see this? Oh yes. Yeah. Well, it's his, his fault that we lost, isn't it? Oh, 100 percent. Always is. Always is. <laughs> Is that an official stat, that fudge, 100%? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 you know, I too have got a lot to owe to uh, to Peter Lohman as well because um, when I went to Denmark last week, he was the one that told me it was going to be £8 a beer in Sweden and I should have listened. Couple of five, so is that all yet? <laughs> but no, yeah. it's, it, 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 I mean, I, I think it is something that, is now scientifically proven that Wednesday fans, you know, quite simply, we're just not putting our chances away, are we? And it's just not on at the moment. And and it is something that he's taking care of. And to be perfectly honest, I I don't have a, a, an idea of how that's going to happen other than just playing at it because it would have sorted them out, no problem at all. Um, right, then, next thing, of course, our brand new feature. This is some kind of record. This is now three weeks we've had this feature. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. What was the one we started last week? Did we start one last oh, week? God. We yeah, started James fucked it up last week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not, 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 not anything like that. Is all I did, all I did last week was actually find the answer to uh, the question that you <laughs> said. Right, that's it. I'm not taking part in this anymore. I'm going. <laughs> I'm going on mute. So, so this, this this week is actually the fourth week we've been doing this. So the first week with Des Hazel. The second week was Andy Pierce that we found, uh, and like so we're trying to get him on the podcast at some point. Uh, then last week was PC Buzz with Rook. Um, <laughs> 
that came from Bull that um, I didn't even bother trying to. I did tweet it. I didn't go much further than that with it. So <laughs> this week, I, I, I've not told any of you which one I, I was going to come with. In fact, I don't think I decided myself until about half an hour ago. Um, <laughs> but um, again, it's probably one for some of this. I need to pick something that's a bit more recent, but I haven't done again. Uh, so this is a player that, that first signed for Sheffield Wednesday in 1982. Uh, oh, with... for God's sake! Oh, for I wasn't God. even a twinkle in my mother's I eye. Bet you, I bet as soon as I name, give his name out, you'll know exactly who he is. Okay. Chris Morris. Is it David Hurst? No, oh, Chris I Morris. can tell you exactly. No, oh, wait, the... sorry, Rich. I'm going to ruin it again. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh, for God's sake! <laughs> I'm, I'm mates. I'm mates with Chris Morris's auntie. I know exactly what he's doing. I'm not. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna ruin it. Everyone else can find out what Chris Morris is doing now. But I could tell you right now, Chris Morris's address, <laughs> what he does for a living, and uh, <laughs> and, and what's going on in his life. <laughs> his, his, uh, his son. His son. His son is my recorder league rep at work as well. So uh, good job. <laughs> I'll pick another one, Rich. Come on. Can't be. And, uh, is he the? Is he the? Is he the? Is he the <laughs> Is he the presenter of the day to day? Oh, you've let him have a feature and you've all just screwed it over. <laughs> Mr. We're not used to features lasting four weeks. This is uncharted territory for us. Rich, Rich, can we go Peter Atherton? No. 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 <laughs> oh, he's proper and sulking, then, isn't he? Oh, he's then, not he's, uh, he's got his arms folded. He's like, no, no. No. <laughs> is, is it better for us to go for Chris Morris's evil twin, Ramon? <laughs> <laughs> he, he had more than one evil twi twin, I'll tell you that. There was a few of them. That, them. <laughs> <laughs> he, had, he had six brothers. He only ever played one in six games. And he's yeah. six brothers were shit at football. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> brilliant. So, I tell you, if anybody has any suggestions for obscure uh, Wednesday fans, James K. James K. Let's all go, Ash, James K. Who gives a fuck where they are now? <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag everyone knows where they are now. Get with the program. <laughs> <laughs> no Whether you're celebrating a birthday, a wedding, or anniversary. Maybe you've passed your driving test, or you've landed a new job. Well, whatever your reason for a party, the Riverside Cafe is the perfect location on Catch Bar Lane overlooking Hillsborough Stadium. To inquire about hiring us for your function, call 07989 856 054 or 0114 232 6121. Um, right then, ladies and gents, so we've got two games to preview. First of all, we have Forest, and um, it has to be said, I mean, they're in a very similar position. Of course, we're not looking at the league table at the moment, Jay. I promise <laughs> I haven't told you. Um, but they are right bang there with us. Um, but they have had a bit of a, an odd start season where they came out flying, and, well, to be honest, they've, they've had a bit of a hiccup since. But they've got some goals in them, haven't they? Forest have had some cracking, cracking results. But... Again, I think they might even be a little bit more leaky than we are, aren't they? What do you reckon, Vic? Are they a bit more leaky than uh, than than Tom Lee's? Ew, is, or... I don't want to think <laughs> about leaky Tom Lee's. Uh, I've got a friend who's a bit of a leaky Tom as well. That's a different story. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, poor Tom! <laughs> Forest is a is a, is a really odd one because they have the last three or four seasons they've been just all over the place, haven't they? they? They bought tons of players. They were one of the favourites to go up and it just didn't work for them. Do you remember when Antonio went there and you were like, you looked at that, they were just, buy, they were doing what Newcastle yeah. had done this year and they just seemed to buy everyone that summer and it just didn't work. That's when they had Stuart Pearce as manager. He's gone. Then they got, um, what's his name? Dougie Freeman. He went there as manager. Mm. Then they had Paul Williams as manager. Now they've got this, this kind of Carlos Mark II kind of not as good version <laughs> as um, as their manager now. And I think they're, yeah, they're in a very similar position to what we were last season, which is the same position as we are this season, really, uh, where it's not really fallen quite into place. They've not got into their flow. But they're a dangerous team. Um, I, I saw them when um, they played at, at Villa a couple of weeks ago. Um, and, you know, they can play some decent football, but they've got a mistake in them, um, which means that this game is either going to be nil-nil or about 8-8. Eight, eight. Um, because two teams that can score goals but also concede goals so um, 
it's going to be a, an interesting old game. Um, I'm going to go back to what I said earlier on, which is I, I, I'd quite like to see Hutch back in midfield. I'd like to stick with Leuvens and Lees as the centre-back pairing and, and Hutch playing in that defensive midfield role. Um, I don't know, having having said that, Hutch in central defence did, did, did do really well, so I don't know. Um, and also, big up to Kieran Lee, because it's going to be... <laughs> It's going to be his 150th game, isn't it, this one for us, which um, is great for him, and I'm really pleased. I'm sorry, James, my apologies. That just, that just really made me laugh. You went, I'm going to go with this, this, and this, but then again, I might go with this. Yeah. I don't know. This is why, <laughs> I, I, see, I can't even play football manager the game, because I just can't make these decisions. <laughs> it, ta- it, takes me, it takes me attached. three weeks to pick a team before I can even play a game. I'm rubbish. <laughs> I've had to brush up on my Nottingham Forest knowledge because I'm doing a guest spot on their podcast tomorrow. And um, Fowler's got money, Fowler's bad, Stuart Pearce not as good as way he thinks he was, Billy Davis was a poor experiment, transfer embargo, Henri Lansbury, a Sambalonga. To be fair, that's very much like what Gemmo said when we had him on the podcast about Forest, isn't it? Because it, it essentially said they're doing the best with what they can do at the moment on there. And to be fair, they're not doing a bad job of it too. So, um, again, they've scored lots and lots of goals. They have a four, four, they've had two four threes, haven't they, so far this year? I, I was just just looking at what Nicholas Bennett had sent, sent earlier. I didn't even know he was at Forest, but he was saying that he wouldn't celebrate if he scored against Arsenal tonight. And... Uh, I don't think he will celebrate. I've seen as they've lost 4-0. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, actually, I tell you, Dickie, on the back of uh, on the back of what you just said, I think Nicholas Bentner's paddy power pants have got as much airtime as Facundo Savas' Lone Ranger mask. Do you remember him? <laughs> remember that? Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there was a, there was, for those that don't know, there was a geezer for Fulham that used to carry around a Lone Ranger mask in his sock. In his socks. And, and every time he scored, he'd put it on as if to say, ah, I've just robbed a goal off you. I think he scored one that season. Unless he scored it once, didn't he? Once in here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But no, as, as you've quite like said, obviously they've got a, a, a bit of a spanking at home from Arsenal this evening. So hopefully they're going to all be in a shocking mood and we'll just batter them. Clearly, 7-0. And of course, once we've finished Forest, then we're up to Blackburn, aren't we, ladies and gents? And it has to be said, they're not having a, a wonderful time, Blackburn, at all, are they? This is the one that we really do need a convincing performance against. Because we've said this last year, against a lot of teams that weren't doing too well. And as James mentioned earlier... It got a bit embarrassing, <laughs> didn't it? But we're we're yeah. crap against Blackburn now, aren't we? So all the time. We're crap against Blackburn. <laughs> we're going to lose 7-2. Um, but Barry Bannon will score a 90-yard goal in consolation. <laughs> That's pretty and much sent how out. we go against Blackburn. Yeah, I, I do feel a bit for the Blackburn fans because, again, obviously like Forest, they're a, a, a big club. Um, and and it, we've all been through it. We've seen what happens to big clubs when it goes Hey, whoa, 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 hang on. They're not a big club. Well, they're, 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 burn. they're a big club from a certain generation, aren't they? No, they splashed a lot of cash at one point. They're not big, yeah, aren't they're they? They're a tiny club. They're like Wigan. They're no bigger than Wigan. Bollocks to Blackburn. <laughs> not a big... <laughs> no, no. I, you know, bollocks to Blackburn. We, we Hashtag <laughs> bollocks to Blackburn. I'm having that. We, we are quite happy to have a go and talk about the likes of Birmingham City and say, oh, you know, they're a, they're a comedy club. Uh, you know, all, all these, even even our city neighbours who are, let's be honest, a comedy club. However, anyone who suggests that Blackburn Rovers are a big club, and, and, oh, he, <laughs> no. he makes me very. <laughs> they won the Premier League. Very, yeah, they, that's the thing. They won. The they won I know they won the Premier League. It doesn't yeah, matter. They bought the damn Black, thing. They, they smashed the seven two. Did it? They didn't even they didn't even buy the Premier League in an era when the Premier League took money to be bought. They bought Alan Shearer for three point seven million pounds. Ah, that's not buying the Premier League. They were they're shysters. They're shysters. <laughs> they shysters. So so in short, bollocks to Blackburn. We're going to stuff them. Bollocks to Blackburn. <laughs> and and all of their sixteen thousand fans. Bollocks. <laughs> Have you seen? Have you even seen that little stand they've got? They've got three good stands and one stand that truly represents them. It looks like the stand at Scunthorpe. They're a <laughs> rubbish. <laughs> it's, it's not it's even the, a real town. It's the Next uh, it's week, the... Eddie previous Preston North End. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eddie, is this is this a is this a Yorkshire Lancashire thing? Does uh, you know what I mean? Is this? No, 
not at all. Not at all. I have the greatest of respect for for Preston and for Burnley and for Bolton. All these all these teams that don't claim that they're anything bigger than they are. Blackburn Rovers uh, were never a big club. And the fact that they won the Premier League is immaterial. Because they went from 10,000 attendances in a in a in a hey, rotty to to Premier League title Eddie. back 10,000 attendances within the space of about 5 years. So fuck them. <laughs> You're all right, Eddie. I don't, Are you I've okay? I think about Blackburn before. I don't really know where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> no, just are you okay? Do you want a cuddle? Yeah, a little bit. Listen. Listen. <laughs> okay, let's just let's sit down. Let's go and get a glass of water. And let's just think <laughs> about it, yeah? And think about how it doesn't affect your everyday life, Eddie. It's not a problem. It's okay. It's okay. Come here. Yeah. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. Had it had it not been for Blackburn, we wouldn't have had that Venky's chicken advert. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for me, they're number one. Jason Roberts loved it. <laughs> um, right then, ladies and gents. So, just before we wrap up for this evening, does anybody have any little bits? Yeah, I'd like to talk about Blackburn. <laughs> oh my God, it's going to turn into Wolves Away, isn't it? Yeah, I'd oh, like to talk God. about Wolves Away while we're on no, the uh, no, no, subject. No, no, no. I noticed, I noticed that Eddie mentioned it earlier on. He gets away with it. <laughs> But from now on, if you ever mention Blackburn, just... you're in trouble. Um, yeah, exactly. Blackburn and Wolves away. Jesus Christ. Right. Blackburn have lost tonight as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, they're rubbish, aren't they? Yeah! Bah! Fucking rubbish! Fucking come on, man. Yeah, bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Colin Henry. <laughs> can you hear me? Alan Shearer, can you hear me? Your, your voice took a beating. Your voice took one hell of a beating. Fucking hell. Paul, does anybody have any a well, little bit? I don't feel like man can really live up to the last five minutes of whatever the hell's just happened. Um, so, firstly, is the um, the latest in in the occasional series of the Carlos quote of the week. Uh, which is, is quite out of date now. Um, and I don't know why this one chick, uh, kind of tickled me as much as it did, but um, when he was talking about, you know, when Sam Hutchinson got sent off and obviously we appealed it and we lost. Um, and his reaction to that was, we are in League 2 when it comes to appeals. We've lost them all. And I thought that was <laughs> that was a very... That was, that was quite deep for Carlos. I really liked oh, that. Uh, and then the other is uh, the first instalment of what's become an unofficial um, occasional series, mainly actually the other week when it was just me, Lord Hillsborough and, and Rich, which I'm loosely calling Grumpy Old Owls, where we start talking about <laughs> things things from years gone by. Now, here's the name. Do you remember Orlando Trustful? Of course. Yes. Oh, of course. He, he, only played, he only played something like 20 games for us. Uh, really? But he is, yeah, he's someone that everyone everyone knows. Right, would you like to know what he's doing now? Because I was actually... He's <laughs> ruining Rich's game yet I, again! I was, <laughs> I was astounded when I saw this. <laughs> Rich is just like, he's just like, sad this. He's throwing his headphones out the window. His microphone's against the wall. He's like, I was, I was in it. fear earlier when he when he said, "Oh, I've got someone this week," and then when he said he's someone that played for us in 1982, I thought, "Oh, thank God, he's not spoiled my bit." This is not where is he now. This is I'm going to tell you where he is. <laughs> no, this is James doing a competition and then answering it as well. Right? You know what I mean? Look, do you want to know or not, you knobheads? I would. Anyway, I'm going to tell you. Orlando no, Trusful no, is is Have now the assistant manager of Inter Milan. Just oh, me. Ooh. There you go. It's no, worth really waiting for, that. wasn't I it? I thought you were going to say. I hope you all choke on your tea Rovers. now. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say it was like up front for Wakes Up Town or something. That's pretty impressive. Um, right, Victoria, my darling. You mentioned you had some rather sad bits for us. I do have some really sad bits, guys. Um, so, as you know, I got Carlos and Tom Lees about two months ago. Um, and on Saturday, we went to Suffolk. Um, so we said goodbye to Carlos and Tom Lees and left them enough food for the next couple of days, whatever else, well, for the next day. Um, and Carl, uh, Tom Lees was feeling a bit bit weary in his little house. He was just kind of sat there, you could just see his little tail. And uh, when we got home, unfortunately, Tom Lees had passed away. Um, 
like floated up to the top of the tank. He had to get he had to go to the special farm down the toilet. <laughs> that means that he'll be with all the other fishies, according to my other half. <laughs> and he'll be really, really happy about it. Um so we did a little send off in some toilet well, he just kind of shoved him down the toilet. I did a little send off. Um and then last night <laughs> Last night I got home. I'm, sorry, I'm laughing. I'm laughing I'm, at a fish I'm, I'm dying. glad you're happy about this, <laughs> You made me laugh at a fish dying. It was the way you said it. I gave it a little send off. So Alice stood next to him. Would anybody like to say a few words? <laughs> and went, yes, yes, I'd love to. I'd love to say a few words. And then it looked like you know that, that bit where they bury Spock in there uh, in, 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 in Star no. Trek. And we're so going really to go to another planet and find Tom Lee's. We've already discussed I'm religious and you're going to hell. So let me just think about my little dead fishies. And then, so I came home last night and unfortunately Carlos was um, just as poorly and floating at the top of the tank. Um, oh. So he also, um, I had to send him to the special farm, but I'm not bothered because I know that he's going to a farm. So I know that that's the only route and that's fine. Um, <laughs> he didn't need burying because I've got a dog that digs up stuff. So he went down the toilet as well to follow, <laughs> will you piss off, Fudge? To follow uh, <laughs> Tom Lee. Um, and, but to be fair, like we waited. <sighs> You know, I'm sorry. Nobody close to you dies for. Did you um, did you go? Oh, it's a special treat for them. They've been alive a week. Let's feed them some pie. Is you know what I mean? No. <laughs> but apparently, like you have to leave it a week just in case it was a disease before you get another one. So we did, and unfortunately, it must have been a disease because old Carlos has popped it as well. Um, oh, but he didn't oh. die quite as dramatically as Tom Lee's. Tom Lee's did this whole like floating up to the tar <laughs> 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 No, it's, 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 the it's, toilet. it's the dramatic day, you know, like they used to do in Tom and Jerry cartoons where they clutch the chest to go, Oh my oh, god, god, I've oh. been shot! Tell mama, tell mama, <coughs> tell mama, no. <laughs> tell little Billy Bob. You know what, I'm going to shove your head in this tank the next time you're over here, see so if there is anything poisonous in it. But anyway, yes, Carlos and Tom Lee's are no more. Um, so the tank is currently being blasted and and cleaned and whatever else to get rid of any sort of fish disease there was. So I would like nominations for the next names of my next two fishies that hopefully <coughs> won't die. Would it be weird <laughs> to call the fish wolves away? Is that an acceptable? Yeah. Name? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! No, James, that's it. I'm calling one of them. It's going to be called Wolves Away. Yes. So and the other um, one, Blackburn. Suggestions for the next one. Well, no, no, Blackburn. I'm not having Blackburn. That's that's just angry. Girl. Like, I've never heard Eddie get that angry, like 15 years of friendship. So, no, we'll leave, we'll leave Blackburn, um, but I will have Wolves Away, so I need a name for the other fishy, please. Tweet your answers in, ladies and gents. Um, right then, so that's going to bring us to an end of this week's show. Mr Fudge, or Bean, if people want to go to you over there on the Twitter, where can we do that? <laughs> yeah, get over to me on Twitter, at Dan Fudge, um, and if you're in the South Coast, you know, Hit, hit a man up. <laughs> Victoria, my darling, where can people send you a fishy name at tweets? So you can find me at Victoria1867. So one of my fishies is going to be called Wolves Away. Um, so I need other suggestions. So it's hashtag TWWFish. Fantastical. Eddie, old bean, if people want to uh, hear more about your Blackburn prejudice, where can we do that? <laughs> <laughs> you, you can find me on Twitter at my new account at Fuck Blackburn. Um, no, you, don't. you can't. You can't do that because that is that's a very bad. I, don't, I, I, if any of you go and shoot Blackburn fans in the face now, it's not because of me. Uh, you find me at Sausage Arms, peace loving at peace loving Sausage Arms. Um, spread the love. Uh, stop the violence. You know, too many people have been killed in this ongoing Wednesday Blackburn gang war. <laughs> in this turf war. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people killing and people dying. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But you know what? Are we are we all in the Riverside on uh, on Saturday before the game? Oh, yes. Yeah. There you yes, go. Sir. So, so the Riverside, which is the official sponsor of the Wednesday week, will of course be hosting us uh, on Saturday. So if you uh, want to come and, and discuss your hatred of Blackburn, because we all hate them, don't we? <laughs> then, uh, yeah, come and see me then. But if not, at Sausage Arms on Twitter. Can't wait. See you next week. 
Um, Rich, oh boy, if people want to find all of you over there on the Twitch, Rich, where can we do that? You can find me at DickyL on Twitter. Um, I'll be with Eddie and the rest of the guys in the, uh, what do you call it, the Riverside Cafe on, uh, on, <laughs> on Saturday, and I won't be tweeting about where they are now this week. Oh, it's your but if anybody has any suggestions for where they're at, oh, tweet me. Right. Oh, okay. Just don't tell James. Marriott calls this. <laughs> and James E. Obbean, where can we find you over there on the social so far? Uh, on Twitter, at James Marriott. Um, obviously, like the rest of the guys, you can catch me in the Riverside Cafe on Saturday before the match. Um, or I'll be starting a riot in the concourse behind the North Stand at halftime. <laughs> <laughs> right, of course, if you'd like to get all of me over there on the Twitter, you can do that at Lord H as L zero R D underscore H. You can also get the podcast over there on Twitter as well, at TWWcast. Find us in the usual places would like to say a massive thank you as well because we are now back on iTunes eventually after all the nonsense we've had over there ladies and gents so if you are an iTunes listener first of all we apologise for the nonsense secondly it's all taken care of and we have now taken back our number one Sheffield Wednesday slot on iTunes as well so hashtag firstly. blame Blackburn <laughs> it was all their fault the bastards Bob over there don't and start and- him off I'm starting off. You know what's going to happen now? I can, I, I can hear him filling up now. I'm all right. I can, I can I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm all right. I'm okay. Oh, don't, don't touch I just me. Right now. Don't want to hold you right now. Don't touch me. <laughs> All right, don't touch me. Of course, you can get us over there on the YouTubes as well. And, of course, Facebook. Facebook's been doing very well indeed just recently. Again, thanks ever so much, Rich. Oh, boy. We are about to launch a new YouTube video tonight, aren't we, my lord? We are. And we would like to say a big thank you to our um, video editor extraordinaire, Richard III, who has worked incredibly hard on this. We are so excited i'm not going to say too much about it because uh, you'll enjoy it when you see it but uh, yes rich thanks so so much for for doing that for us and a big happy birthday to richard the third as well so again um, keep a little out for that too it's been a pleasure as always ladies and gents thank you so so much for joining us once again be good be safe and we will see you real soon <laughs> <laughs> Through the lot of just, you, I'm out of it. Just imagine, just imagine if Peter Purvis back on Blue Peter Days went. So send us your answers on a stamped addressed envelope. What animal begins with A A R D? And Valerie Single just piped up with Avark. Next one. <laughs> <laughs> that begins with A A D. Isn't that what I said? No. I think that's what Fuck he said. Did he? That, if, sorry. If we, sorry. If we rewind. Rewind Stars. our entire. Fudge <laughs> <laughs> one, Victorian ill. <laughs> if we keep it as an aside for when we do need to pad out because it's a really good idea that I would like to talk about it I'm just a bit worried about time that's all is that yeah. okay yeah yeah I just don't want to chop fine. everybody out bollocks to you Sorry. it's alright I'll just do I the apologize. work you just throw it away no no, no it's you fine. just screw over Rick and James yeah, just to the newest recruits <laughs> that's it Lord H <laughs> just you know there's a new recruit you just... anymore Ugh. what if, it, if if you shut up then we might be able to hit it all in <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Never said That's that, a you porn know, name. that he's married <laughs> to, you know, Mariella. Michelle Obama. What? what? I don't know. I just, I always use her as things. So. I'm sensitive. I always with... use her as things. <laughs> 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 What's that you're pouring the tea into, Jack? <laughs> Michelle Obama. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody got the info for the telly? Are they the thing that changes channel? What is it? <laughs> Somebody sell Obama. <laughs> oh, yeah, but it? Do you know what? Nine times out of ten in the quiz question, you'll get it wrong, but that one time it is actually <laughs> Obama. That's one one time the question is, who is the president of the United States might do? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <The only> <laughs> You know that you know that thing that your nan used to have back in the day. 
the, the Eddie Izzard used to call the Hodder Dudder Dudder. I don't ever knew the name of. It was like a Hoover, but it wasn't electric. I just found a name for it. I wish Michelle Obama was around in the 80s now. We'd have had a name for that. <laughs> oh, God, my, my ribs hurt. Yeah.